Yo, my name is Benjamin and in this video I'm excited to talk about new features we've designed to improve mobile navigations in Framer. So let's dive right in. Here we have a simple top bar navigation component and it works nicely on a desktop breakpoint. It even scales down nicely to a tablet size, but on a phone the links will get cut off. So let's double click to edit this component and design a real mobile navigation. I've already set up my desktop variant, knowing we'll design a mobile version. So let's have a look. There is this hidden menu icon next to the logo and it is contained in this shared stack called top. And we'll be able to stretch this out on mobile. I'll go ahead and hide that again. Next, we have this stack called links that contains all these links horizontally distributed with a 20 pixel gap. And they all have placeholder links pointing to framer.com. This stack also contains a hidden grid that just contains a few images that will resurface on the phone menu. And finally, we have this tiny one pixel frame that represents the bottom border. So let me zoom out and the next step is adding a second variant here in which we'll be able to design our mobile menu. I'll rename it to phone and I'll set the width to 390, matching the default phone breakpoints in Framer. We can set the height to fit content and the direction of this tag to be vertical. Next, let's find that hidden menu icon and bring it back by setting visible to yes. And then we'll stretch out this stack by setting width to fill and the distribute property to space between. Now this is starting to look a little more like a mobile menu. Let's now do the links as well. We'll set the width to fill, direction to vertical and align to start, gap to 10, and I'll add some padding as well, leaving a bit of extra breathing room at the bottom to ensure our links do not get cut off on mobile Safari. I'll also select all of these links and give them a different text style that simply bumps the font size. As promised, let's bring back our grid as well by setting visible to yes. And there we go. We've now converted our desktop navigation to a mobile navigation. But we're not done just yet, as we would like this menu to be collapsed by default and then expand on tap. So with the phone variant selected, let's add a third variant to this component. This one we'll call phone open. And this is the one we'll actually use for the expanded state. So I'll go ahead and set this menu icon to the close variant. And just so you know, this is a very simple component that just animates these two lines into an X. We would also like our links to actually fade in. So I'll go ahead and select the links and set opacity to zero. Then we'll simply select the phone variant, reset the height to fixed and resize it down to 64 pixels, just like the initial variant. So now this is really starting to come together. And as I'm sure you can imagine, we can now start animating between these two variants. And the trigger of this animation is this menu icon. So I can go ahead and zoom out a bit, select the menu and I'll hit L and I'll drop the arrow onto the phone open variant. And I'll do the same from the phone open variant X icon select it, hit L, and drop it onto the phone variant. So now we can cycle between these two variants on tap. All right, so far so good. Now it's time to make this one work really nicely on mobile devices. I'll first add a max height and I'll set it to 100 VH so it can never exceed the height of the viewport of any device you're viewing it on. Next, we'll set overflow to scroll. Again, we're doing this on the entire phone open variant. And then I'll add a new property called overscroll. 
and by default it's already set to contain. And what this does is ensure that we can freely scroll our mobile menu without actually also scrolling the page behind it, making for a much better user experience. We've also improved the previewing experience of your interactive components, where previously any sort of height animations would get cut off. You can now freely preview this right from within the component canvas. With our mobile navigation all done, all that's left to do is return to the home page and within the phone breakpoint, set this variant to the phone variant. And here we can see that the setup is working correctly, but even better is testing this on an actual mobile device where we can get a real sense of the scrolling experience. Viewport support in components, the overscroll property, and the improved previewing experience allow you to design high quality mobile menus directly in Framer. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more navigation updates coming soon.